Hello, this is Damian Kirk, back with my final video in my series on my Minecraft processor. This video is going to be a little bit about actually programming and some demonstration of what's going on behind the scenes when the program is actually, actually running, and maybe a little bit more about the printer. So, this is the, the top of the panel. It's With my current settings, I can't really see all the way to the ground very well, um, but I have the render distance a little bit lower for better performance while I'm capturing. Uh, so you'll see that some of these levers are flipped, and um, this these first several are at immediate. The thing about programming this is, it, like I said, it doesn't have system calls, so you can't really have it take input during the program. So the only real way to do that is to change immediate values in uh, in the program as a kind of like a preemptive input. So you could load up this program and then say, all right, well these values, you just need to change the last seven bits of each of these add immediates if you want to, you know, change what your input is. So the program I have loaded in right now is a simple sorting program, just a simple uh, bubble sort that sorts four elements. Um, I had it doing five, but that took a lot longer because of just the amount of space I had in my instructions. So these first four instructions are the add immediate instructions that put the initial values in the uh, first four registers. So I think here we have 26, 45, 24, and 3. But you can set these to be whatever you want before you run the program. Um, so you could say, all right, here's the, the program, the shell program, but these are the instructions that you can modify the immediate values on to kind of give it preemptive input. And down here toward the bottom, you see I'm right near the bottom. This instruction is the print instruction, which you can see from the 111 opcode. Uh, right, right now I have register 4 specified right here, which will be, at the end of the program, it'll be the largest of the four initial values, but you can set this to be whatever you want. So you can, instead of 4, you could have it as uh, 1, like that, if you want the smallest of the four values, or two for you know, the second smallest, or three for the second largest, third smallest. Um, so you, you can get whichever one of those you want. Unfortunately, the way this is set up, it's not really made to be able to print more than once per run. You really need to clear it in between times you print, and you can't have it print and then just try and print again while it's still printing, or while it still has values in the, uh, the more significant places uh, of the base 10 result because then it'll just screw everything up but um but you can get one value and then you can try to run the program again see if it's see if the other value is also correct etc uh it is a little time consuming so i'm going to go ahead and start running this so we can look at some stuff and then i'm going to cut out a lot of uh this footage and just show the end result uh when it's getting done so right here, let's hit the run button. That sends a signal over here and starts the clock. So this is going to be really laggy and it's not going to look great, but bear with me. See, this torch turns on and the signal goes around the clock and gets back to it, turns the torch off, then the signal turns off all the way around. Um, it's not as efficient as a normal computer it runs at about one decahertz, which is not great, but it is kind of necessary for everything to work correctly. Um, so you can see the, the program counter over here. Right now it says four. It's not updating very well just because the actual rendering, but there it just changed to five. Uh, and then if we wait a few seconds, it's going to update again. Do, 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 do. Yeah, there we go. It's a six. Um, let's see. Well, let's look at the actual uh, the right data. So this line, let's see, which line is it? This line right here is the clock signal. So let's watch for that to to go off. You see that go off? It means it's updating the instruction. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, we might not be able to see it. There, so you saw that turn on, and then if you wait a few seconds, the, it sometimes takes several seconds, the value, the actual write data, once it's all been processed, will uh, 
come in here and then it'll go off again. You can see all of that gets ready. I don't know what it's doing. Um, but yeah, so like I said, this uh, it's not very efficient. It takes this program takes depending on how many switches it needs to do. It takes like five and a half to eight and a half minutes to run just to sort the elements. But it's cool that it works at all. I would think, in, in my opinion. But um, yeah, you can see the control unit uh, values maybe change. I'm probably not going to be able to see that. Oh, but we can see right now the branch signal. Okay, it was just on, so I guess we just uh, branched to the beginning of another section or the end of a section or past something. Um, yeah. Oh, well, let's look at the, the register values. So if we look here, we should be able to see the value in this register, which is 26 right now. That's register 1. This is register... Am I missing them? No, this is register two, and this has uh, 24 right now. This is register three, and oh, it just got updated. And this one is the the 45, and this has this is register four and has three in it, the initial uh, three value. So yeah, I don't remember what the original order of them was. And then right now, this program is using register six for like uh, a counter so that it'll so that you know how many like times it's gone all the way up so it can like not go all the way to the top for a more efficient bubble sort and it uses seven both for set less than and for like a, a temporary storage when it's switching two values um let's see that's just got two in it right now i don't actually know what that is for um Hopefully this is running correctly, even with all the extra stress on the actual computer. But uh, we can see the ALU in action a little bit, maybe. I don't know what, how much we're really going to be able to see. But uh, maybe some of these carry-ins. Uh, are any of these on? I hope so. We can see some carries somewhere. I guess we're not really adding much in this. But yeah, so this uh, this does take quite a while to, to finish up. I'm not going to include all of this, but hopefully we get the correct result at the end. So pretty soon here, I think it's going to branch to somewhere around instruction 26, and then that's going to be the print instruction. And then I'm going to fly over and kind of watch what it's doing when it's printing. Okay, let's see if this works. So the value should have been loaded. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see it here. Uh, it's already started running, but you can see there's, uh, if you ignore the one on the left, which is for just for the minus symbol, these latches are showing the current value. So we have, there's 15, it's already down to 15. And there's five, so you can see it's uh, subtracting five each time, or subtracting 10 each time. This clock has now stopped. Subtracting 10 again would be negative. That allows this clock over on the other side to run, but it doesn't need to because the value in these uh, latches is already less than 10 because it didn't, you know, that clock didn't run 10 times. So we come around the front and we see the value that we get is 45. Uh, it's a little hard to read just because the lamps really aren't super good at like distinguishing the lit lamps from the unlit ones, especially when you're seeing them in this pattern. But hopefully, you can see that is. In fact, 45. This can take quite a bit longer with larger numbers, but it's definitely faster to have a dedicated hardware here. If you were like using this to run a division program, which I have tried, it works, but it's a lot, a lot slower than having dedicated hardware that, you know, with special clocks, with their own speed and you know conditions and everything. But um, yeah, I was surprised that I even got the base 10 display to work, but I think it's uh. A, very, a really nice addition to this whole thing because 
as cool as it is as like a, an exercise, there's not much to really see. And uh, just having this here as like a, a proof that your program worked, like a, you're expecting this result out of it and that's what you get, uh, I think is uh, kind of important to the whole thing. But I mean, you can't just check the registers, but you know, I think this is a, an interesting addition. Well, that wraps up this video, and with it, the series of videos on this processor. Uh, hopefully, some people will actually watch this. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything, or, you know, hopefully I explained everything adequately uh, for people who have a background in this kind of thing to understand it. And, yeah, thanks for watching.